Hello, and welcome to the final service of 2020. This is actually going to be less a service and more a kind of guided reflection and meditation for the end of a very, very challenging year and looking forward to the coming year, to 2021, in faith and in hope. For some years now, I have had a particular way of praying as I go to bed at the end of a day. It only takes a few minutes, and it's based on four R's. Uh, replay is the first R. Uh, I, I replay the day. I just think through what's happened uh, in this day. And then secondly, I rejoice. Uh, I thank God for the things in this day that I can praise him for. But then thirdly, I repent. Every day there will be things I've done that I wished I hadn't, things I've done that I shouldn't, and I take a moment to confess that to God and to ask his forgiveness. And then finally, my fourth R is I recommit. Uh, as I go to bed, I pray that when I wake in the morning, I would be ready to live my life for Jesus and to serve him. So four hours, uh, sorry, four hours at the end of every day. And uh, what I thought I would do is, if it's, if it's a few minutes at the end of a day, um, maybe we could spend a bit longer doing something like that at the end of a year. The format of our time together now is going to be a bit like the Good Friday Hour at the Cross service, if you've ever joined us for that. Uh, we will sing, we will look at the Bible, and we will have extended times of quiet for your own thoughts and prayers and so on. And it may be that you want to, to take part in this time in the normal Sunday morning church slot, as it were. Um, and if that's, if that's you, then, then wonderful. Um, but if you, 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 you may prefer another time. Uh, you may prefer to wait until the kids have gone to bed. Um, or, or maybe this is something you'd like to do on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day to actually kind of tie it more deliberately to the end of a year and the start of a new one. It's entirely up to you. But to get the most out of this, it needs to be a time that can be free from distraction, a time when you can be quiet, a time when you can enjoy being with God. God. And I imagine that most people will want to do this on their own, but you certainly can do it with others if you prefer. As it stands, as it's set up, this service will last an hour, but you are more than welcome to fast forward through some of the quiet bits if you would like to take less time or to pause if you would like to take a bit longer over it. Go at your own pace, do it in a way uh, that you find most helpful. There are gonna be three sections. Uh, the first two are looking backwards, and the third is looking forward. I think you'll find it helpful if you have a Bible with you, and if you're someone who uses a journal, you might like to have that with you. Um, if not, uh, you might find it helpful to grab a piece of paper and a pen uh, so that you could perhaps jot some of your thoughts or prayers down uh, if you would like to. So if you need to pause the video now and go and get those things, then please do and just restart it when you're ready. But now that we hopefully are all ready to begin, let me commit our time to God and pray that he will work in us in it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 2020 has been a year like none that most of us have ever experienced. It's been a year with disappointments and pain and sorrow. It has also been a year in which you have been faithful and Lord, we pray that you would help us to use this time now in a way that helps us to process this past year well, that helps us to, to think godly thoughts about it, to pray faithful prayers about it. And Father, as we look to the coming year, a year in which we desperately hope there will be some things that are different, 
a year in which we desperately hope things might return to something more like normal. We pray that you would help us to approach that year in faith, in trusting our hopes and our fears to you and looking to enter the year depending on you. So Lord, please, would you meet with us now in the quiet of our own homes? Would you speak to us through your word? Would you help us as we pray? And would you be at work in our hearts? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before we start the, the first time of quiet and reflection and prayer and so on, uh, we are going to sing, and our opening carol this morning is, O Come All Ye Faithful. O come, O ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come, ye, O come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore he in Christ the Lord. God of God, lights of the Come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. I'm not sure that joyful and triumphant are the words that we would most naturally use to describe how we feel at the end of 2020. 
Although, uh, because of the birth of Jesus, uh, we have every reason to be joyful and to know that we are triumphant. And we'll think about that a little more later. Um, But this has been a spectacularly challenging year, hasn't it? One of the images the Bible often uses to talk about the birth of Jesus is the image of light shining in darkness. You might think of Isaiah chapter 9, at verse 2, which says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Or you might uh, think of the familiar passage in John chapter 1, starting at verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then John, the author of the gospel, talks about John the Baptist and says this, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. So the birth of Jesus is light shining in the darkness. And I think we most appreciate the light when we're most aware of the darkness. So in this first section, I want to invite you to replay 2020, to think back through this past year. And as you do so, I want to invite you particularly to give some time to recognizing and acknowledging the darkness that there has been in it. I want to ask you to think about and pray about the things that you are grieving. Perhaps the hopes that have been dashed, the plans that have been left in tatters, maybe even the people that you have lost. As you do that, do be real about the pain. If it helps, write down the things that you are most grieving or most distressed about from this past year. Make a list of the things that have most saddened you this year. And then spend some time praying about them with God. There will be a chance to rejoice in the good things later on. We're not going to be wholly focused on the darkness. We will look at the light in a bit. But for now, bring the darkness to God in prayer. Grieving with God is a great and biblical thing to do. And you might find it helpful as you do this to read through Psalm 13. Psalm 13 is a wonderful prayer expressing grief and sorrow to God. Why don't you read through that psalm and think about it as you replay this year to yourself. There will be a little countdown timer on the screen showing how long there is until the end of this section. And if you don't need all this time, then please do just fast forward the video or or scroll forward. And if you need longer, do feel free to pause it. But my prayer is that in this time now, you will be able to bring to God the things that weigh heavily on your heart and to know him at work in you as you do so.
Okay, we've spent a bit of time replaying 2020 and grieving the darkness, as it were. But in this next section, we're going to spend some time rejoicing in the light. It's easy to forget them when there are so many difficult things that have been going on. But I suspect that we all have things that we are grateful to God for in this time. Perhaps it's prayers that have been answers, answered or situations that have not been as dreadful as they could have been. Maybe it's good things that you have seen come out of these difficult times. Well, we have now a chance to allow God to bring those good things to light and to thank him for them. But of course, when the Bible talks about light in the darkness... It means so much more than just every cloud has a silver lining. The light in the darkness is not just that there are some little good things that happen in an otherwise difficult time. It's actually talking about the birth of the Savior. It's talking about our Savior, our rescuer coming to this dark world. It's talking about the arrival of the one who came to forgive our sins and to give us new life. So in this part of the time, one of the things that we might want to praise God for, one of the things we might want to rejoice in is the promise of God's forgiveness. So I want to invite you now to to replay 2020, to thank God for the good things you've seen in it, but above all, to thank him for giving Jesus to save us from our sin. You might find it helpful, as we, as we have this time, to read through Psalm 98. Psalm 98 uh, is a great prayer that might well help you rejoice in the things you can rejoice in, and especially in the salvation from sin that Jesus came to bring. Once again, do feel free to fast forward or to pause, depending on how long you'd like to spend on this section.
Well, having spent some time thinking about the things that we can praise God for, we are going to sing again. We're going to sing the carol, Joy to the World. Uh, We're going to sing celebrating the fact that the greatest thing we can thank God for is that he gave us his son. Joy to the world So, we have looked back over 2020, Uh, we have replayed it, we have grieved the darkness in it, and we have rejoiced in the light. In this third and final section, we're going to be looking forward to the coming year. I can make no promises at all about when the pandemic will come to an end, or about when things will return to something a bit more like normal. I know we're longing for it to happen. We hope it will be soon. But of course, we don't know when it will be. I can make no promises about the timing. But God does promise that whatever we face, he will be with us in it. And God invites us to depend on him in it, uh, to depend on him for this coming year. So I want to invite you now to to look forward to 2021 and to to think through and to pray about what your hopes for this new year might be. Things that you hope will be, things that you hope won't be. And I want to invite you to commit them to God, to entrust them to God, to depend on him for them. And as you look ahead, you might well find it helpful to read through Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 to 31. 
That's a passage that talks about waiting on God, depending on him. So we look ahead to 2021 with our hopes. We bring them to God and we depend on him for them. Once again, do fast forward or pause as you need to.
Well, I hope that has been helpful for you. I hope it's been a helpful opportunity uh, to look ahead with hope and with faith. We're going to bring our time together now to a close by singing one more carol. Um, I don't know about you, but I want to take every opportunity I can to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So we'll sing that as we close. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and in this coming year. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.